Okay, let's go ahead and solve this basic algebra equation. And I'm not even going to tell you what type of equation this is because I want to give you a complete full opportunity to show off your algebra knowledge and skills by solving this. So go ahead and put into the comment section if you know what type of equation this is. And better yet, go ahead and put the solutions to this equation. Of course, I'm going to tell you what type of equation this is and exactly how to solve it. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you the correct solution to this problem in just one second. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I have been teaching math for decades. I absolutely love helping people learn mathematics. And I'm going to tell you right now, all of you can be successful in math. And I'm especially speaking to those of you that have a tough time with mathematics, okay? So if math is your nemesis, if you're like, I hate math, I'm, I'm just bad at math, listen, let's see if we can't turn this around, okay? I'm telling you right now, you definitely can. You can do far better than just pass your course. You can actually excel in math. And if you don't like math, you could even turn that around and end up uh, eventually loving math. But here's the three things you need to be successful in mathematics. One, you got to realize that you got to put in the work, okay? You need a strong work ethic. There are no shortcuts. There are no easy paths. So if you are not working that hard to learn the material, uh, you know, you need to work harder. So that's the first thing. The second thing you need is encouragement, all right? You need someone to, uh, to tell you, uh, telling you, don't give up, especially when math becomes difficult because there is a path forward. But here's the third thing you need, probably the most important thing, and that is you need great math instruction. So whoever you're learning from or whatever you're learning from, you actually have to understand what's being taught. Okay, There's nothing more frustrating than sitting in the classroom. And I'm not trying to knock any uh, teachers out there, but if you're not understanding your teacher or if you're not understanding what program you might be using, well, then you're never going to learn. Right? The way I like to teach math, because math is such a technical subject, I like to ex just explain things in easy to understand language so everyone gets what's going on without watering down the material. Okay, And I can do that because I've been teaching for years and years and you just get that kind of uh, experience and those kind of uh, skills, if you will. But uh, if you need help in your current math course, or maybe some sort of special test that you're studying for that has math on it. I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, maybe a teacher certification exam, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also gonna leave links to my math notes in the description as well. Most students take average notes. A lot of students don't take any notes, okay? That is absolutely a recipe for disaster. Uh, students who take great math notes almost always end up with great math grades. So the first thing you need to do is start improving your notes uh, if your notes are so-so. But you can use my notes in the meantime if you like. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so what are we talking about here? Well, I'm saying uh, basic algebra. This is a typical type of problem that you could very well see like in a pre-algebra course, certainly like an algebra one course. And what we're de uh, dealing with here is absolute value. So these little bars right here are indicating this is an absolute value function. Okay, and what is absolute value? I wanna explain all this in a second, but this happens to be an absolute value equation. Okay, so hopefully you knew that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the answer to this equation, and there you go. So V is equal to positive negative 45 over 2. Of course, you can write that solution this way as well. All right, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, that's very impressive. Certainly, you definitely earned yourself a nice little happy face and A+, plus, a 100% and multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and family that you know how to solve an absolute value equation. Nice job. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this. And if you're struggling with uh, absolute value equations, I'm gonna do my best to make this very easy for you. All right, so here is our absolute value equation. Again, we have these little bars right here. That means absolute value. We're trying to solve for this variable V inside these absolute value bars, right? And of course, this is an equation. So before we get into this actual equation, let's just uh, uh, kind of have a simpler form of this equation, okay? What if I told you this? Hey, uh, 
what number, I have, I have some number here, and when I take the absolute value of it, I get five, right? Some sort of mystery number. I don't know what it is, but when I plug it into my absolute value function here, I get five. So let me ask you, okay, if you had to answer that little uh, riddle or puzzle or that little question, could you do it? Okay. Think of some number. When you take the absolute value of it, you get five. Now, some of you might be saying to yourself, well, what about like negative five? If I take the absolute value of negative five, don't you get five? Yes, that is true. How about the absolute value of five? Do you also get five? Yes, that is true as well. So hopefully you understand um, that when we take the absolute value of negative five, you get five and absolute value of five, you also get five. So going back to my little uh, question here, the absolute value of what number is five? Well, it looks like uh, when we take the absolute value of negative five and five, we get five. So that would be what this number could be, five or negative five. But let's actually um, kind of look at the, abs uh, the absolute value's definition. So what is the definition of absolute value? Well, the definition of absolute value is the distance a number is from zero on a number line, okay? So here's my little number line here. Here's zero, here's five, and here's negative five. So distance, think of it like getting your tape measure out. So here we have your little tape measure, your ruler, right? And we wanna measure the distance. So I'm gonna go from zero to five, and I'm saying, okay, hey, how far is five from zero? You would say five units away. So I say, okay, great, uh, measure from zero to negative five, and you would tell me five units. See, when you measure like a room or some sort of, uh, you know, like a window or, you know, a door or something like that, when you measure, okay, if you think about your little um, tape measure or your ruler or whatnot, you know, you're going to be measuring in positive units, okay? Distance is typically, uh, you know, or displacement in positive units. So five and negative five happen to be the same distance away from zero. They're just going in different directions, but in terms of their distance, they are the same. That's why when you um, think about absolute value, like here, you know, uh, the absolute value of negative five is five, and absolute value of five is five, you can almost think of this question as this, hey, how far is negative five from zero? How far is negative five from zero? Oh, it's five units away. How far is five from zero? It's also five units away. Okay, so it's really important that you understand the concepts involving absolute value uh, because, you know, I could just tell you how to solve absolute value equations, but if you're not understanding the underlying concepts, then you're going to get confused with other things. All right, so now let's go back to our equation here, and I'm saying absolute value of 2v over 9 is 5, okay? So if you think about it, you're like 2v over 9, what is this thing equal to? Well, I'm like, oh, I know, 2v over 9. I know you're just trying to disguise yourself because you must be a 5 or a negative 5, okay? It's the same thing. This right here must represent a 5 or negative 5 because that's the only thing that we can plug in uh, into this absolute value function that will make this answer come out as 5, okay? So what we want to do here is set up, uh, let's just kind of go back here to, to this uh, equation. Uh, the absolute value of what number is equal to x? Well, you could write that as this equation, absolute value of x is equal to five, okay? So x can either be equal to five or negative five. Here's the main thing I want you to know. When you're dealing with absolute value equations, there's always gonna be two solutions, okay? Always two solutions because you can measure out in both directions, okay? All right, so going back over here to this equation, okay, what you want to do is just kind of use your, you know, common sense and be like, okay, whatever's inside the absolute value equation must be equal to this number or the negative of it, okay? And that is the exact steps you need to take when you're solving an absolute value equation. All right, so you're like, okay, this is absolute value, this is equation. You're like, oh, 2v over 9, you must be equal to 5 or negative 5. That's the only way we can get this as an answer. So uh, set up two equations. This is how you're, you're, you're going to get your two solutions. 2v over 9 is equal to 5, okay, or 2v over 9 is equal to negative 5. And then you're going to solve those respective equations, right? Hopefully you have basic algebra skills here. So 2v over 9, uh, we can write uh, uh, that as being equal to 5 or 5 over 1 and just simply use um, the cross product um, 
to solve this. There's other ways you can approach this. Uh, but hopefully you have those basic algebra skills down. We are talking about basic algebra. So we have 2v is equal to 45. v is equal to 45 over 2. Now, if this um, part of the problem is a little bit confusing to you, then you need some assistance. You need to kind of brush up on how to solve basic linear equations, okay? And I'm using the word basic because we're talking about pre-algebra level stuff. But listen, uh, I'm saying the word basic, but if you don't understand, you know, what's going on, well, it's not basic to you, right? You're like, well, it's basic to you because you know a lot of math. It's not basic to me. Listen, I totally get that. Just trying to say that... If you can't do this, this would be considered kind of like basic algebra skills. So linear equations, you got to brush up on this. And when we solve for V in this uh, equation, we're going to get V is equal to negative 45 over 2. All right, so some final thoughts here, okay? When you are solving an absolute value equation, whatever that expression is on the inside, okay, it's going to be equal to the positive and negative of this number. Okay, you need to know these steps. And you could have more involved, more interesting absolute value equations. Let me just show you here. So if I had 2 times x minus uh, the absolute value of x minus 7 plus 1 is equal to, um, let's say, 6. All right? Well, we can't set up the two equations until I kind of isolate this absolute value part. Okay, so this is a very basic um, absolute value equation. In this case, I'd have to subtract 1 from both sides of the equation, and then I'm going to end up with 2 uh, times absolute value of x minus 7 is equal to 5. Then I need to, need to um, divide both sides of the absolute value equation by 2. So I get x minus 7 uh, is equal to 5 halves. Now I need to set up okay, to um, uh, have my two separate equations here, just as I did in this step. Because I have this ice, uh, this absolute value function isolated here, it's not isolated yet. So again, don't get overconfident if you're like, oh, I totally understand what's going on in this problem. Well, there's more interesting problems here, and there's a lot of other things you kind of need to know about absolute value. And when you figure out how to do absolute value equations, then you're going to get into absolute value inequalities, which are totally different than absolute value equations. And what can end up happening, and I've seen this uh, throughout my decades of teaching mathematics, is that students will start confusing how to do absolute value inequalities with absolute value equations, et cetera, et cetera. So that's why the only way to get good at this stuff is to practice, practice, practice. So a couple final thoughts here. If you need help with this level of math, I'm going to probably uh, direct you towards my pre-algebra course, if you happen to be pre-algebra, or my Algebra 1 course. Uh, that would really help you out. I also have additional videos on my YouTube channel uh, about absolute value as well. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.